this question, we're working on a problem related to exponential growth and decay, and we're given a set of data which we'd like to model in an exponential format. A strain of bacteria is placed in a petri dish at 30 degrees Celsius and is allowed to grow. The following data is collected. Theory states that the number of bacteria in the petri dish will initially grow according to the law of uninhibited growth. The population is measured using an optical device in which the amount of light that passes through the petri dish is measured. We're going to have parts A through E. So here's the data that was collected. On the initial reading using the optical device, we see that we have 0.23 for our population, the amount of light that passes through. After two and a half hours, 0.43, three and a half hours, 0.62, four and a half hours, 0.6, excuse me, 0.83, and after six hours, we have 1.17. So in part A, we want to treat time as x as the predictor variable and use a graphing utility to fit this exponential function to the data. So this is the format that we're trying to fit this data into, y equals a b to the x. This is an exponential model. So over here, I've got Desmos open, and I'm going to use Desmos as my graphing calculator. And I need to insert the data that we have. I'm going to type this manually. I'm going to add the item using a table. We're going to type in these times, 0 hours, 2.5, 3.5, Four point five and six. Let's see if we can zoom in on that just a little bit. Then we have our point two three. This is the amount of light that goes through. So we're just manually typing the data in. Now, as we typed in these ordered pairs, we can see the data showing up here. And um, this is going from zero to about six here. My vertical axis, you can see it just goes just a bit above one. Got one here. So from our data, it does almost look linear here. But you can see that as we zoom in just a little bit, that the, the y values are increasing here a little bit faster than just linear. So we're going to use an exponential model to fit this data. So we need to figure out what the value of a and b are in this model. Now, the value of a represents in this model the initial value. So our initial value or initial amount of light that passes through is going to be close to 0.23. And then the B is going to be our growth factor. So uh, in the second line of Desmos here, I'm going to type in the model that I'm looking for, and it will match this format right here. So we're going to type Y. And over here in the column, the second column has our y values and was titled y1. So we want to write y1. And we're going to use the tilde button from our keyboard. It's in the upper left. And then we're going to type the rest of our model a times b to the x. And notice the heading on our x column is x1, so I'm going to put x sub 1. And what that does is it makes an exponential equation that very closely matches the data that we have here. Now, for the Desmos calculator, um, if you read this, 
information here on the log model. The Desmos calculator uh, does the approximation a little bit different than others do. So we want to um, check this log mode so that the calculation matches how the TI graphing calculator and other graphing calculators um, uh, calculate the data so our answer can be consistent. Then down here in the bottom, we have an approximation for our A and B. And looking right here, um, it states that we want to round to four decimal places. So we're going to type in our model. Um, that's going to be A.227. And if I round to four decimal places, it will be eight. Then we're going to multiply that by B. B is 1.3196, rounded to four decimal places. Actually, it's not rounded. We've got all the decimals there and this will be to the x power. So now we have a model that represents the amount of light that passes through at different moments of time. So in our next part, what we want to do is express the function that we just found in a, in a slightly different format. We want to use this format here n of t equals n naught e to the kt. So we're going to do just a little bit of manipulation using the properties of exponents and logs. The model that we just found was y equals 0.2278 times 1.3196 to the x, and we want to express that with a base of e rather than the base of 1.1396. Uh, we also want to use the variable t for time instead of x. So one of the properties uh, that we're going to use here is that e and natural log are inverses of each other. So if we have e to the natural log of x, this is the same thing as x. The natural log and the e being inverses cancel those operations out, leaving you with what's on the inside. So I want to write this in terms of e. So I have 0.2278. And I'm going to write e to the natural log of all of this right here, 1.1316 to the x. Um, so just as I demonstrated this property here, if we have e to the natural log, those are inverses of each other and cancel. Here we have e to the natural log, those are inverses and they cancel. And that brings you right back to the original model. So this is something that we are allowed to do because of those properties of logs and natural log. Excuse me, uh, exponentials and logs. So I'm going to simplify this a little bit more. What I'm going to do is use a property of logarithms called the power rule. The power rule for logarithms will allow me to take this x and move it to the coefficient. That will give e to the x natural log of 1.1319. And then what I want to do is calculate natural log of 1.1319. I'll do that with my uh, Desmos calculator. The natural log of 1.1319. You can do that here. Natural log. 1.3196. Okay, so that gives me 0.2273 if I round to four decimal places. placing this natural log of 1.1319 with 
three. Let me double check that one more time. Point two seven seven three. And I'm going to switch my variable to T. And this will give us our model written with a base of E rather than uh, the base of 1.1396. I left off that 6 there. OK, so let's type that in. We have 0.2278 e to the 0.2773 t, and that gives us our model n of t. We're continuing on, in our next part, we have a few graphs that we want to choose from. Um, so we have the graph from Desmos, and you'll notice that our y-intercept is a little bit raised up from the origin, not very much, but it is higher than 0, 0. So looking at this first image here, it looks like the y-intercept is right on the origin. So I'm not going to choose that one. In looking at the next picture, this is a little bit better. You can see that the y-intercept is above the origin. And let's look at this one here. We have the y-intercept above the origin. So this one, uh, these two are the options that we have, B and C. So I'm going to look at my data points here and see which one seems to line up a little bit closer. Um, looking at uh, this one here, I can see the data point is under the line. Here we have the data point under the line. This one has it over the line. So let's look a little bit closer. You see that this data point is pretty far off the line and it's above the line versus answer choice C. The data point is below the line and much closer to the line. So that's matching up more, more closely with the picture that we have from Desmos. We're going to choose answer choice C. All right, in our next part, we want to use the exponential function from part A or B to predict the population at x equals 7 or time equals 7. So we want to substitute 7 into our, into our model. So let's do that with the Desmos calculator. And in the directions here, it does say that we can use the model from A, part A or part B. Uh, but I'd like to use the model from part A because there's a little bit less rounding going on here. In um, Part B, we had, we had rounded this number, and then we calculated the natural log of that number, and we rounded again. So we could cause some extra rounding error by using Part B. So let's stick with Part A, and let's type in our model 0.2278 times 1.131. One three one nine six, and we're going to raise this to the seventh power uh, because we want to let x equals seven for this question. Um, so that gives us 0.54. We want to round to two decimal places. That's 0.54. Okay, so we got that being incorrect. Let me double check that I typed everything correctly. I got one point, I've got an extra one there. 1.3196. Okay, that's a little bit better. So now we've got 1.59 as our predicted value.
Okay, great. Okay, so for our last part here, we want to use the exponential function from part A or B to predict when the population will reach 1.65. As I stated earlier, I'm going to use the model from part A because of that possible rounding error. So let's bring our whiteboard back. And let me write down the model from part A. From part A, that was y equals 0.2278 times 1.3196 to the x. And I want to find when the population will reach 1.65. So that's my y. I'm going to plug in 1.65, in for y, and solve for x. So this would give me the equation 1.65 equals 0.2278 times 1.3196 to the x. Now to solve this exponential equation, I first want to start by isolating the exponential. I'm going to divide by 0.2278 on both sides. And this will give 1.65 over 0.2788. Let me just double check that. Uh, okay, looks like I've got a copy error here. This is 2278. It should be 2278. 2278 is the correct. Alright, so 1.65 over 2, 0.2278 equals 1.3196 to the x. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And once I introduce the log, I'm able to use the log properties, the power rule, to move that exponent to the coefficient. Now I have x natural log of 1.3196. On the right-hand side, I'm just copying this down. And then I'll divide both sides by natural log of 1.3196 natural log of 1.3196 and this is what we want to type into our Desmos calculator to get this final answer. I'm just going to take a screenshot of it so I can use it to type in the calculator. Okay, there's my answer. Let's type that in the Desmos calculator. I'll have natural log of 1.65 over 0.2278. And then all of that over natural log of 1.3196. Okay, so that gives us 7.139. Let's type that in. We want to round to two decimal places, 7.14. So in that part, we found that it's going to take 7.14 hours for the population to reach 1.65. Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.